Hello everyone. In, in, in today's episode and, and the first episode of um, the, the, the the summer um, episodes, I'm joined with Chloe, and it's going to be a really fun episode today because um, we're going to be talking about a mixture of different things. We're talking about mental health um, and Doctor Who, and um, a little bit of Star Wars as well. So, Chloe, thank, <laughs> thanks for coming on today. No problem. My pleasure. <laughs> I love talking about the, these sorts of stuff, so it's cool. Yeah, uh, I'm, 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 I was really looking forward to like speaking to you and like um, talk about all this wonderful stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Have we met before any other mm-hmm. time? Um, I think we kind of connected on TikTok and then well, we haven't met. I've done anything. Yeah, really. oh, just because sometimes yeah. I do lo- lose track of who I meet at like Comic yeah. Cons and stuff like that. But oh, yeah, yeah, I thought I've met someone. I think I met someone he looks similar to you, that's why I got, I got confused. But yeah. I, got, I got um a familiar face. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um like if you could do like a little intro of yourself so so people know who you are. Yeah, sure. So um I'm Chloe, um, but some of you may know me as Fem Ren, uh, the Empress, Empress Ren on TikTok. Um I'm also on Instagram and some other things um, that you may know me from. But yeah, that's me. I'm a Star Wars cosplayer, but I also do just silly little Star Wars TikToks and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, 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 you like doing that, don't you? Like all Star Wars content and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's my main sort of uh, thing. It's Star Wars, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um... Do you feel like um like with with TikTok um like like because like on, on different videos um like how how do you plan like when you release them and stuff or or do you just do them and release them or do you just schedule them? So I try and post once a day at about half five six because that's kind of sort of time that works best for me, mm. um but it doesn't always end up that way like sometimes I just don't have time to film or you know I sometimes I will bulk film so film like three or four in a row but other times I don't have the ideas um so I just have nothing so it depends if I have the ideas or not like at the minute I think I I posted one tonight and I I have two in my drafts that I can post tomorrow and the day after so that's cool um but it's not always like that I'm not usually that prepared so <laughs> it's fine yeah it's a mix of things but it's always once a day ish yeah yeah I, I, I'm kind of similar really um I, I, I normally do it once a day um sometimes mm-hmm. two sometimes like yeah mid afternoon and then more night time um but I don't I don't really post like like some people post loads, don't they? Like in a day, like <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I my TikToks just don't do well if I post them in the day because people are at work and things like that. It just you know I'm trained. I've been doing digital marketing for a couple of years now, um, and I am trained to know specific um, optimum times and things like that. And you shouldn't really post in the day if you care about that sort of thing. But do what you want, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like mm. yeah, I'm the no- normally it's like evening for me, like um, mm-hmm. a, like a, a regular time. Um, I kind of do. It's similar to when like a podcast episode releases. <laughs> so like yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I share the podcast episode at the same time as sharing some sort of video I've done as well. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> like I think the algorithm as well is a it's a bit yeah. weird as well. Like with one video it could go really good and then another one not so good. Yeah, TikTok is a really strange one. Um, some, yeah, as you said, ones that you think that are going to do well sometimes flop or vice versa. You know, it's, it's crazy. So you just have to keep going and seeing what works, basically. Definitely. And like, for, like for example, like with the TARDIS. Like if I do a video, um, even even to that TARDIS down there, or or, or some <laughs> other one, I kind of know it's going to go quite far. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but I don't always want to use it. I want to sometimes just don't want to use the TARDIS or or anything. So it just depends, I suppose. Yeah, you don't want to do the same thing over and over again because then it will start getting boring and it won't work in the end. Yeah. Um, which is why I found. So yeah, it's hard. 
yeah like last year I actually I went to a place um that had a TARDIS um I like it's on tra- tra- train station and I've mm-hmm. done multiple videos there and people were looking at me it was quite funny because I was just there like um doing my thing and and people isn't were just... that else court station I think there's TARDIS outside it might I know there's one there I haven't been to that one but there is one I can't oh. exactly remember where it is but it is hidden it's like a hidden TARDIS somewhere and I went there oh. and, um and I've got to say it's dirty <laughs> oh, nice. yeah. um, and like when I actually post one of the videos people were commenting saying go in and I, would, I would love to go in but it's not it's like a show one like you can't really go in it yeah yeah, the ones that at Comic Con are usually very good um, for stuff like that. So yeah, you could use the ones at Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I, I I've never actually been to a Comic Con because um like ever really. So um, it's something I want to do like in the future. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. they're like the highlight of my year, especially when my supporters and stuff recognize me and it's just so overwhelming <laughs> like I think last time I think my I went to LCC which London LFCC sorry on London Film and Comic Con where I met Jodie Whisker recently um and that was February sometime so only a couple weeks ago and um I didn't enjoy it at all it's not as well organized as MCM which is another version of Hong Kong that I absolutely love I, it was just very very badly organized but MCM they had MCM in Birmingham and London both of the ones I've been to before have been absolutely amazing I love MCM I'm going um in May this would have come out after I would have been anyway but um yeah I'm going in May to London MCM and I'm really excited to go back it's such an amazing experience so yeah I would definitely recommend going to one it's yeah. great you have to let me know how it goes yeah sure you can get your tickets it's, it's fun you should come but um where are you based Essex Essex yeah you can come to the London one then mm. I, I, I would um, I, I I would like to go to those sort of things but because like I like, speak before like before before we started like the podcast that like because um I based that podcast sometimes run out of crimes and, and stuff that like makes me quite vulnerable to to like um different things and with with I suppose COVID still about um hopefully it, it may be something to be in mind in the future but I'm not sure about May because May's not really well, it was only a month uh, kind of away from when we're speaking now but it is oh Jesus uh, yeah. yeah oh my yeah. god where's yeah. time going yeah. <laughs> Jesus it's a period isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, like when I did those, I still got like loads of drafts though, just so I don't have to do them all the time, like with, with videos and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If When people see my TikTok, I have about over 100 drafts, but they're not ones to post. They're basically uh, second or third takes of TikToks I've posted. So yeah, sometimes I will do a few takes. And then I will go back and choose the ones I want and then forget to delete the rest. So, yeah, I have about 100, over 100 drafts of just second or third takes that I need to delete, yeah. but I haven't yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do the same. Like, um, I, I, sometimes I have I go to them and I say, hang on, have I already put one on? Because I've done this one a few times, the same video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to be careful with that. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got at the moment just under four hundred drafts. Um, because, oh wow, uh, Jesus! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need to play yours out, don't <laughs> <me>. <laughs> um, Because it's hard, you know. Because there's uh, from doing. You see different video clips. You, oh, hang on, I'm going to do this one next, and then you only put it on like like one a day, and then you think to yourself, oh, I'm not going to post this one yet. There's there's something coming up like. Um, this is Easter or summer science seasonal things that you want to do for different videos so you want to do them first mm-hmm. and then do some of another time yeah and I, I find as well if I bulk film sometimes if I go back to one of those videos a couple of days later I'll be like oh I don't 
think this is trending anymore or I, oh, I don't like this anymore. Like I'll, I'll grow out of it a bit. So yeah, I have a lot of those videos as well. <laughs> that I'm like, oh, that's a bit cringe. It wasn't, it wasn't as cringe at the time, but it is now looking back at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm the same. Like there's some that like, I scroll down and I think, hey, I might not put that on now. Like, I don't want to delete it, but um, yeah, it's just sitting there yeah, though. <laughs> just sitting there. There's some from a while back, um, beginning of probably end of 2020. I think it was. Oh my long, god! Long, um, like I've never heard really nothing like no videos, not like not saying any drafts. So I always have some drafts somewhere. Mm, fair enough. Yeah, that's that's a good idea, but. Yeah, yeah, mine are just unusable half the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good though when you don't do it for a while, I suppose. Um, mm. and, then, and then you're you're ready to another video and and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Chloe, when did you start watching Doctor Who? Oh, when I was a kid. So yeah. when so the reboot came out in. 2005 was it yeah that's it yeah yeah got my facts right then so I was and I was six then so I started watching when I was six um when the reboot came out which is probably not the best age to um you know <laughs> make a six-year-old watch that sort of stuff but yeah. you know I, I grew up watching it I played Doctor Who in the playground <laughs> with, with my friends oh. and like you'll be like the blonde girl's rose, you'll be Martha, all this sort of stuff, or, you know, <laughs> or whoever. And, um, yeah, I grew, grew up watching it. I absolutely love it. I don't know any, well, I don't know a lot about Classic Who. I haven't actually watched any Classic Who, but, um, yeah, Modern Who is, um, it's my childhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's me as well. I was about the same age. I, I was, I started watching it. Um, mm -hmm. and there were certain monsters that I was petrified of at that age and yeah um, same I'd have nightmares and my mum would be like of like the Daleks the Cybermen and my mum would be like why is she having so many nightmares I'm like did you maybe watch Dr. Who <laughs> yeah. yeah we all I have to blame <laughs> we've got to blame this person who, who got us into it don't we <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes exactly I mean I don't I mean I'm glad they got me into it yeah. but yeah I don't think they appreciate it me having nightmares all the time <laughs> no like I was the same like the episodes the first episode that um I didn't really like was the um well I, I love it it's one of my favorites but uh, at the time yeah. um I was petrified like you know the I think the girl in the fireplace one where the the, the, the clockwork thing under the bed oh um, yeah um, that's different that one's yeah. really um unique definitely because it's less about you know Rose and and um, the doctor and stuff it's more about madame de pompadour is her name yeah that's it that's yeah. her name yeah. yeah i mean those i yeah those ones never really affected me that much but i could see why definitely yeah <laughs> i i enjoyed I, I did enjoy that episode like it's sad though i think as well like, definitely yeah it's one of those ones that you don't realize the sadness of it until you watch it again when you're older and you kind of because at the mm. time you're just like, oh, it's cool. And then you you kind of watch it back when you're older and you understand what happened and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. like that's the case with a lot of Doctor Who episodes that you don't really understand how sad and how important they could be until you rewatch it as an adult. Yeah. Like, for example, I mean, I watch, I, I was pretty old when this one came out, but the Vincent van Gogh one um, with Matt Smith's Doctor Who, that one is got a lot of um themes of you know mental health and it's very dark if you understand it as an adult so I think that one is is such an important episode um which is highly praised by people so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, 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 yeah I think that does what you affect your mental health that, that episode like especially for that mm. for the actor plays Vincent um as well um mm -hmm because he does actually look like Vincent van Gogh, <laughs> the actual that person. Yeah, it's um, crazy. <laughs> yeah. He did a good, well, um, good job at casting in that one. Um, yeah. But yeah, there are so many episodes that are so 
much deeper than the surface of you know when you would have watched it as a child um so it's very important to go back and watch all of them i think and really understand what's going on yeah that's it that's it we've got it's it's, it's, it's hard some episodes like like especially there was one that uh like that i kind of didn't understand and see the point of one of the episodes when peter capaldi was the doctor I think it oh, was, right, yeah. I think it was the one straight after um Clara, Clara, Clara like kind of died. Um, yeah. And he was in this, I think he spent this whole episode trying to get him to Gallifrey. Um oh, through that, right, through, yeah. Through, through the glass. Um and I was watching the episode and I was thinking to myself, um, well if the whole episode trying to get him through the glass <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot deeper than it's a lot more meaningful. I mean, like most TV series, um, it can appeal to both kids and adults. So yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And like even if one episode isn't great or a doctor isn't the doctor or like isn't good, you feel it's not good, you still watch it because you like it, you like watching it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you watched the show because you were brought to watch it when you was about five or six and you feel like you've got to be committed to it. <laughs> yeah, and it's also just appeals to the child in you. I mean, there's sometimes I could be watching stuff and I'm like, oh, that's, that's a bit corny, that's a bit cheesy, but I'm still sitting there watching it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um. Do you have like a particular favourite doctor of yours? Or, um, it, it would all, I mean, everyone says this, but it would always be David Tennant for me because he was like the main one I grew up with. Um, yeah. And yeah, he's he was amazing. But I do have a soft spot for Jodie because of what she did for women in sci fi. Um, I don't appreciate the writing that much about around her episodes, but I appreciate her so much. And that's what I wanted to tell her when I met her, but the organization was so bad. I didn't have like a second with her at um, Comic-Con. I just blurted out like, you're such an inspiration to women. She's like, okay, picture. Like, it was so crazy. She's lovely, don't get me wrong. It wasn't her fault, but yeah I'm like oh, I just wanted to tell you how amazing you were and I didn't have time but um yeah definitely it'll be it has to be David Tennant though number 10. Yeah yeah <laughs> I uh I'm the same I he I anyone it, for, for, particularly either it's hard because like you feel like you should be saying nine because nine was the first one and then um then you feel like hang on a minute number 10 like he was good I like I, I'm, I'm the same I really like 10 um he was he was a he was a doctor for me because he um it, I was actually cried I, no but when he actually left I, because I was so young like I was actually pretty upset that he was leaving and it actually felt oh, like, yeah, the, um, like the emotion actually felt like he was actually leaving or, or leaving you as like an actual person yeah yeah that and the way he performed it as well by saying i don't want to go that line is so famous and um yeah it's so hard for me as a young person i remember the first time i properly wept over a tv show um and i was like my my mum was concerned about me because i was like really crying <laughs> because it really hit me was the episode with uh 10 and um, his his daughter, who is actually his wife in real life, Georgia Tennant, was in it. And uh, when she gets shot at the end, it was just such a shock to me as a child and the emotions behind it. And like just the thought of, I don't know what, what hit me most about it. I think it was just the, the thought about losing his daughter who he just met. And it really made me cry so much. That was such a hard one, but also Rose um, in Doomsday. That one it all, always makes everyone cry. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that is tough. That like mm. that one. But um, out of all the companions, actually, the one that was really sad out all of them. Um, and I think there's there's two, like for three, like there's there's two companions 
for Tenth Doctor, the Tenth Doctor one for me was Donna, was the most upsetting mm. one. Um, yeah, um, that was hard because she had a compl- her memory completely erased. It's not like they left like Martha. It, she actually forgot everything. Like, yeah. 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 That's all. yeah. What's your second favourite? Um, my second favourite, well, um, well, the, the second most upsetting one was um, Amy and Rory. Um, like yeah, I knew you were going to say that. That one's so hard as well. That one's awful. Yeah. Um, it's just like, why can't they just have a nice ending? They always have to die or something. It's so hard. Yeah, yeah, like, like, and you feel like that's going to happen to Yaz that now. You. It, Okay. Oh yeah, my heart is hurting because I I love I love the sort of queer representation. Being a bisexual woman myself, I'm so happy they added the yeah queer representation of Yaz um, liking the Doctor when she's a woman because you know it's quite common that the companions like the Doctor and people are like oh it's an overused trope, but in this sort of circumstance it's a lot different. It's representing I mean I know they've had gay characters before obviously Jack was Pam probably um mm. is it oh who I I'm so bad with the Peter Capaldi episodes the girl in oh, one of Peter Capaldi's well 12 oh um, yeah companions. Bill, Bill. Bill. <laughs> yeah that's it Bill Bill that's it she's she's gay um and they represented that but it's it's good to have the doctor be represented as queer as well because um I mean we don't know what's going to happen between them two yet but they could be a thing and um it's good to show that the, the doctor can be all sorts of different genders sexualities all sorts so yeah I love that I just really hope there's a good Thasmin as they say 13 and Yasmin that's yeah. been ending but knowing Doctor Who it's probably going to be heartbreaking so <laughs> yeah it's gonna be that way, isn't it? Because like John, John Bishop plays Dan, he's gonna leave. I think I, I would have thought he would go. Like he's not gonna get killed off. I don't think. Like, but similar how Graham left, um, and then yeah, it's because she's so attached to the Thirteenth Doctor. Like mm. it just feels like it's gonna be how what happened when the Tenth Doctor, uh, his last episode when the Master comes back. It just feels like it's gonna be that same way for Thirteenth Doctor's last episode. Yeah, yeah, that's probably that. It's, it's a tough one because she has deserved so much better. <laughs> She's she deserves a good ending, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah like it's gonna it's gonna be interesting, and I feel like her last episode will be her best. Um, mm. I, f- I think. Um, but but all the doctors are like I think they've said that. Their favourite is the first, <laughs> um, like personally. Wait, the fav- their favourite is the first? Like, like their first episodes. Like, oh, their the first doctor. episode, yeah yeah, 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 I get you, yeah. I, yeah. I know Jodie said that before, it's her first episode. Yeah. Yeah, it must be kind of crazy, though, stepping into those boots, the big shoes to fill. Um, exciting, crazy. That's why I appreciate Jodie, because she got a lot of backlash she stood up for women in sci-fi and it's you know a, a legacy that I'm trying to pass on with my still little TikTok videos and stuff yeah. um trying to bring women into the world a bit more yeah I think that's great like I, I think I think it's good because like it, it helps with like inclusion and, and, and keeping people involved with different things um yeah the thing um, is it's yeah. just I even though I love Doctor Who Growing up, it was always the girl was the psychic, you know. Um, yeah. I said when we played Doctor Who in the playgrounds, girl always had to be the psychic. The girl was the one that was always in danger and stuff. And I'm so happy Jodie is there for young girls growing up now so they can see that they can be the superhero as well. You know, they can save the day as well. Yeah, um, they can. <laughs> I yeah. think it's great. I think it's great, like, that, that they make that inclusion and, like, for that and, like, um, Mm. And me having autism, it makes me feel like really like like everyone have autism because 
that's one thing they struggle with being inclusive and and and, and like um like people um like, like with awareness months uh, raising awareness for different things that makes things more inclusive for other people and i feel like that that's really good that that you do those make those videos around that and like um like 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 like, like the thirtieth doctor doing that and being the first female as well which is a big step mm, yeah exactly it must have been really hard for her and um yeah bless them i'm happy <laughs> yeah yeah but um but yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how it ends for her and, and like what happens yeah, yeah because they've already filmed it like a while ago so and I don't know how many episodes are left either. They haven't kind of made that clear. I know they've announced that there's, there's one coming up. It's oh, yeah, something about the, pirate ship. Yeah, there's, I think there's probably about two left out of her oh, okay. thing. But yeah, it's not as many as we're used to, <laughs> really. Yeah, it, it, the, the structure of the series has been really, really strange. Like the amount of episodes and the way that putting them out as well it's like really strange order sort of thing and having if there's two left having two random ones you know why not why didn't they release them at the same time as the other ones that were at the start of the year um yeah. doesn't make sense to me but <laughs> yeah because you're having like if you're having like from one episode to a, a long time different to another one they're obviously going to do stuff between then and like, like mm. in the real world <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um yeah. yeah and we don't know who the 14th doctor is going to be they usually announce it by now but no one knows do you have your predictions of who it could be i feel like it's going to be a girl again um like do you? like in my mind i don't want it to be because i want it in a way i want it to be like take it in turns maybe like one year like each can maybe take it in turns now um as mm. they've gone to a girl um and then they uh, a woman sorry and, and then they go back to a, a, a male and maybe it around a bit um but what i would love is not to know i think it's good because if we find out when the regeneration is maybe that would make us it'd be like a surprise kind of yeah that's true that would be i would like that as well i would there's so many that have been rumored that i would li really love like um richard Iowadi. I think he would be great. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who's been, but I, I kind of agree with you. I would like to see a male take it on again. Um, so it's not like, the thing is, I just don't want incels to be like, oh, another woman, it's ruined, blah, 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 and then not give it a chance. Um, so that's why I would like for it to be a man again, just to, you know, give tell people that it is, the thing is, when Jodie was announced and people got up all up in arms, I was like, you clearly don't understand Doctor Who. You're clearly not a Doctor Who fan because the Doctor is an alien, a, an alien who can regenerate its its body into whatever, literally. <laughs> and it's crazy that there's been 12 that haven't been a woman so far. They've all been male, you know, so it makes sense that yeah. It's a woman. It does. Um, it just makes sense. But yeah. <laughs> it does. It, it does make sense. And like, um, as much as I suppose it's because everyone's used to that male and not used to a female. And, and when I heard Jodie was announced in the first place, I watched a couple of shows that she's been in and uh, she was pretty good. Um, I think she's she's a good doctor, but just just poor writing. And if the writing was yeah. better. I think I, as Russell T Davis is taken over, if she, if she possibly did stay under him, I think episodes could be more better um, mm. for, for her and, and stuff. Um, um, it is surprising because the current writer has done good writing before in different things, and he, he just yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's a shame, but and it's a shame she didn't get her chance to shine properly. Um, I feel like there are some good episodes where she did, but um, it's a shame that it wasn't the whole way through her her period of being the Doctor. But yeah, I think I would. Yeah, as she said, I've I watched Broadchurch before, 
Um, she's incredible in Broadchurch. If you haven't seen that, that's a real heart jerker series. She is incredible in that and she makes you really like cry. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, she's, but she hadn't been in quite a lot of like big things before. So it was good to kind of see her get her moment and hopefully she'll be in more big stuff in the future. Yeah, I hope so. Like, like you got the 60th, like, that's why they have to pick an actor. It's, it's weird, isn't it? That they've changed, decided to change the doctor now because the mm. 60th is only next year and there's got to be a good doctor. It's got to be a good actor who can take that pressure that from, yeah. from now because there's not long. Like, it's ne- only next year and it's, it's going to be very interesting when we, when we do find out who that doctor is. Yes, yes. So the 50th episode was so good that I don't know what they, if if they will do anything to celebrate the 60th. 60th. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see, as, as I said, I'm, yeah. I'm open-minded for whoever it could be. <laughs> Me too. Me too. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting one, I think, um, to see who that is and like, It'll be nice to do it separately if they go. If we're going to be celebrating the 60th, which I thought we will be, as we did the 50th, um, but it's going to be it's going to be very different. It's going to be nice to see how, how they do it. Mm, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to do it and, and like get doctors back again. Maybe, um, like I can see Matt Smith coming back. I can see. Um, David Turner, if he did, it'll be his last, I think. If he did, it's got to be yeah, his Yeah, because he has done it already, and yeah. Um, with Matt, he doesn't look like he's aged, really. <laughs> no, um, that's true. And David um, has a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, David has. And um, you could see it. You could even see it in the 50th, I think, um, that, that mm-hmm. aging. Um, yeah, they tried to make him look the same, and he'd look so much older. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, and Rose as well. Rose and it Billy Piper looks so different, and you're like, <laughs> you yeah. look so different. Yeah. yeah, and you've got Karen Gillan, and I think mm-hmm. it'd be that's gonna be interesting if they brought Donna somehow back for the 60th or Amy and Rory because they're gone in a way. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. So I would be more interested for Amy and Rory because. They got taken by the angels. It'd be nice if they left off that storyline and um, from what happened after. Yeah, because people always say, Oh, why didn't the doctor go back? And it says all about paradoxes and how it can rip the hole in the universe and stuff. But I reckon he could have gone back and visited them back in time. I'm sure it would have been fine, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 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 different. It's hard because doctors, I said from Peter Capold, and I no, I reckon. All the doctors I've watched, Peter Capaldi's had probably one of the longest run with a companion, like with Clara, I think. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Because um, Bill, when he was in a few episodes, I think, <laughs> and then she, yeah, he got killed. <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't remember her name. I was like, Who yeah, is that again. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was very disappointing. Though, how she did get they got rid of her, like. Um, it's, it's like she got turned into a Cyberman and, and stuff, and then she went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and that is um, that's crazy. That is. <laughs> it is, it is. But yeah, I, I Pete Capaldi's sort of era. I'm not hugely like I, I don't care that much about that one because it's not my favorite. Definitely not. No, I don't either. I I, I only mm-hmm. watched it. I only watched it to be loyal, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> um, like, the first episode was awful, in my opinion. Um, mm. Like, like he got better when last season was the best season, I think. It was. Yes, I agree, um, yeah. Not because he was leaving or anything, it was just how he was acting, and it was much better, I think. I mean, it's the same with Jodie's. It's like they need a bit of time to get into it, and then when they do, they finally... When they finally get it right, then it changes again. Yeah, but like, the difference is with Christopher Eccleston, he did a season, so I suppose you can't really comment on him. 
But yeah. um, with David yeah. and Matt, I think all the episodes were awesome. I like uh, all of them. Like, yeah, true. Um, there wasn't no. I suppose there were off episodes, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. that, but the acting in there was great. Like, like there was no like dips or anything on their performances. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like with Jodie's first season, I kind of felt that was pointless. In my uh, really because there was no storyline to it, was there? <laughs> no, it was kind of every episode was something different, something weird. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I love. Uh, I'm gonna get hate for this. I do love Bradley Walsh, and I do. I did love Graham. I just didn't love all three of them all together. It just felt a bit much sometimes for me with Ryan, um, Graham, and Yaz. And it's just, oh, it was just a bit much for me. Yeah, it is like, the TARDIS is too full. <laughs> yeah, and I feel bad for toasting Cole, Coyle, Cole, who played uh, Ryan. Is it Ryan? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's that, it. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Because um, he got one season and felt like he was really overlooked and his character was really poorly written and stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I got re- that was really off when they brought his dad in there, and we we all think we're going to learn a bit about him, and then he goes, yeah, don't hear anything off his dad anymore. Um, mm. um, but but yeah, it's it's crazy. Like um, like in a way, I felt he it, it was no, they maybe shouldn't have used him to play the character because he wasn't mm. really doing much. No, exactly. I don't think he was. He just felt like a spare part half the yeah. time. Yeah, just a part for, for Graham to be granddad to. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, but but Yaz is kind of the main camp companion, isn't it? Like you have Yaz or um, Jodie. You always remember that mm, one yeah. companion. Yeah, I'm glad Yaz stayed um, so we could have, as I said, that sort of relationship with her and Jodie. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And like with um, like like like, like with TikTok and stuff. Like um, how how is it like doing like, like with mental health and like and like I suppose posting a video and like with the comments and stuff. Like how's that for you? Like with your mental health. It's interesting. So ever since I started to, I so, <laughs> when I started TikTok, it was October twenty twenty. I just graduated from university. I had no job. Um, my mental health is really bad. I had to move back to my parents' house because I couldn't afford uh, the flat I was living in at the time. And I was just going through a really bad mental health patch. Um, and so, yeah, I started TikTok and it really helped me being able to get some creative energy out um, and doing things. And I've been really, I mean, I've had good as everyone I've had good mental health days and bad mental health days um I am on medication and I have been for a while now and I've, it's something I talk openly about because some people are so scared of medication but it's it's you know some people can be ashamed of taking medication but you shouldn't be you'd have to take antibiotics if you break your foot or whatever <laughs> um yeah. it's, it's no yeah. different um, I always say mental health is a lot like um, if you have physical injury, you, yeah, as I said, if you broke your ankle, you wouldn't leave it. If you go through a traumatic event, you wouldn't leave your brain um, unfixed. You have to heal it. Um, and there's no, nothing wrong with that, you know. So um, TikTok has been really supportive. It's been amazing. Um, I've absolutely loved the feedback I've been getting you know you can always say there's the bad comments but I get the bad comments very rarely I actually got a couple bad comments today which was first time in a while um I I posted a video today and it was actually to do with my mental health like speaking of it um it was a video about me um I I hate like trying to describe TikToks because they're so weird when you try and describe them. Um, But yeah, it was about me facing my past self and um, the bullying I went through and representing how stronger I am now. 
I had a lot of like incel men's men's men commenting on it like oh I'm so scared like oh shiver me timbers like sarcastically and yeah. I'm like you completely yeah. just missed the point like <laughs> thank yeah. you you just missed yeah, the point yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've grown a thick skin um and I've been through a lot of stuff in my life so TikTok the very very rare bad comments on TikTok don't affect me at all yeah so yeah TikTok has been great for my mental health but it can be difficult for other people it's all a personal experience I'd say definitely and like I like I saw I saw the video before we started actually I, I, I was on TikTok yeah I, I saw it and like um I can kind of relate to it as well because I've been mm. bullied before um and I understood the meaning of it because um as well as you like and Star Wars kind of relating it in a way and and, and I am um, saying like apologize like for, for, for what you've done in the past and like I'm just strong mm. what you're relating what you're saying was you're stronger now and like you can beat beat the bullies and uh, and yeah like, it was a weird it's a weird video for me um it meant a lot to me actually filming that just looking at to put a picture of me when I was younger on there and looking how much I've changed and how just thinking about how I was back then and how I was suicidal and stuff like that and how if I had gone through with it then I wouldn't be sitting here today I wouldn't have made that TikTok and it's just makes it all worth it you know it's very soppy and very deep but it does <laughs> having made this video today has made it worth it and yeah it, it feels so good to be able to stand here as a woman I am today and say you know if you the people the stuff that I went through as a child was traumatic but they can't affect me anymore. Like I'm such a better person today now because of it. There you go. I I suppose it's with confidence as well as well because I think you get older and you get more confident, don't you? Um, mm, as well. A hundred percent. Yeah, TikTok has boosted my confidence as well. Being myself, um, and my confidence started building once I left school and I went to university and started discovering yeah. myself started discovering my sexuality as well um started being okay with being a bit different and stuff and yeah just really doing what I want to do it's really helped my confidence yeah I think it's important <laughs> difference is very important um I think because like I, I was bullied in primary school and mm. um because I, I was diagnosed with autism when I was nine and I wasn't really talkative and I would kind of take it in a way like I wouldn't say need help or anything and and, and with getting bullied uh, I couldn't really tell anyone because I could make it worse and, and stuff and it was a hard situation and like I'm more I wasn't confident then of course and now I am so um I've had the comments on TikTok as well um mm. or, um in the past uh, it, it still happens now sometimes but um like for example there was one where um I, I was my, I, because I have my own temp doctor uh, clothes I wear to do some oh yeah that's cool videos and and and, and other um ones I've got to to do different ones and uh like people comment saying you don't look like him and, and stuff like that and uh and then not the point uh, no no <laughs> not it's not point. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not and like it's like they just miss the point completely all the fucking time it's they're so yeah. stupid most of the time it's you just have to laugh at it because yeah. they're yeah. so thick <laughs> yeah definitely and at the start when i started the app i did actually get quite offended when people were being mean on the on the, on the mm. comments and i think because that's part of me part of being having Autism, uh, maybe I take things a bit more literally occasionally, but I try not to. Yeah. Um, but but now my mindset is I don't care if you're blocked or, or go away. I just let me do my thing and, <laughs> and stop. I think for me, like, it's, if I, the first time I see it, it stings a little bit. I'm like, oh, that kind of hurt. And then I think about it, so I think about it and just think how stupid they look. And it, oh, most of the time, I do this quite a lot. If I get a, a hate comment or something, 
I will be laughing about it 10 minutes later to my friends like look how stupid this person is like that's so funny um because they try and make a point and it's just so stupid <laughs> so um yeah I've learned how to deal with stuff like that I really it doesn't affect me it does at first but after 10 minutes I'm go I'm cool <laughs> like whatever because <laughs> cool. I know that 99% <laughs> of other people commenting are absolutely lovely and will have my back no matter what so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I felt I, yeah, I think I the same as well. Like, like people, I put stuff on about my my Crohn's on my dot two page. I don't encourage you to do it a lot, um, because mm. I don't know how people are going to react if they're going to be mean. Um, but I have done that. I, I did a video the other day about being like isolated and stuff, and like like I had some really good comments and and people have commented saying that they they enjoy my videos and, and like like they enjoy watching them and hope I make more. So it kind of makes my day get comments like that. Yeah, those comments are absolutely lovely, and it just makes it all worth it. Yeah, yeah, because like it, I, I did, I uh, like the sound. You know, remember the episode from um, Midnight in Doctor Who? Um, that episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that one's so yeah. crazy. Like yeah. the writing in that is crazy good because you never see the creature, but it's so scary. Yeah. Yeah. I always wonder what it did look like though, because they um when yeah, they put, same. yeah when they put the visor down, they said there's someone out there <laughs> at the front of yeah, the yeah uh, I'm like where um, I can't see yeah. anything <laughs> no no um well that that soundtrack you know at the end where he got his uh, voice back um mm. um well, that soundtrack I did that of, of of a video I did and kind of just going around my house just looking at uh, windows and thinking and put hands over my face just to say how been isolated means because uh it especially in covid times and, and stuff and anyway with people with a chronic illness that, that's how life is sometimes anyway mm-hmm. so um it was a video i thought i had to do just to keep people aware it's not just a i do these videos i do these videos to keep me happy and to keep me busy i suppose um as well like like with you like you didn't have a job i didn't really um I was in most of the time, so I had a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. I mean, um, yeah, it's I've done mental health videos before and they haven't actually reached a wide audience, but I'm, I'm happy that I have done them because it means people who did see them can relate and stuff. Um, but it is hard. That's why I do have mental health links in my bio. So... In my link tree, which is uh, the sort of link that you click on where all your um, pages and stuff are, I have uh, links to both UK and US mental health services. Um, I've done both because I have an equal split of um, my created, my audience demographic, which is really strange how it's half and half. But um, anyway, yeah, so they're easily accessible. I don't know if people actually use them or not, but they're there if people do need them. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, it's good. Like, it's good that you have that for, like, people to, to go on and, like, it's good you're mm. passionate about mental health. Yeah, and I've used them before. I've had to go on my own TikTok page and use them before. Um, you know, if I've had some bad breakdowns and things and thought, you know, I could relapse into some bad things habits and stuff but I've used them and they've really helped so <laughs> yeah because we have our I suppose our good days and our bad days I mean mm. yeah yeah I I there's a lot of stuff that does affect me um yeah there's a, been a lot going on and sometimes it, I, I think I'm strong and then sometimes some really bad stuff can happen in my life and it really hurts but and I feel like I am relapsing, but yeah, I know how to deal with it now. Um, and yeah, I know how to help other people. I've seen, I have friends and stuff that have bad mental health issues and I know how to help them. And yeah, it's really important. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And like, that's what I kind of create a podcast for, really, like just to help people. Um, like um, if it's like, about chronic illness, if it's about mental health, if it's about people's autism, I, I kind of help that. And and 
like with autism relating to that to a lot of people's hobbies as well um having people in here mm-hmm. about Doctor Who sometimes and I, <laughs> I talk about Doctor Who all day me <laughs> yes uh, same actually yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's just one of those things like I would talk about all the time and um I feel um even if yeah I I would just talk about it like um in a, I, I actually I did post a video once on TikTok, I did the re- regeneration scene of David Tennant, um, and some people, like in the comments, everyone talked to their opinions, but um, so some people were saying that um, they thought Peter Capaldi's leaving speech was more emotional than David Tennant's, um, and I was, going, I was like, fair enough. Um, like, yeah, um, wouldn't it, agree, but fair, fair I, enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I suppose, like, like with Peter Capaldi, he had a good speech. He had a good speeches when he was doctor, I think. Um, mm-hmm. um, Matt Smith did as well, really. Um, that, um, really I like with Matt doctor. Smith how he looked at the camera when he said, well, did he say when the doctor was me, he looked down the camera. That was oh, like sorry. kind of a break in the fourth wall moment. Like, whoa, <laughs> felt really weird, but I liked it. It was quite cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were the two doctors I didn't want to go, Matt Smith and David Tennant, yeah. <laughs> when they left. Um, um, hopefully you feel like that more in future Doctors and, and everything yeah. yeah definitely that would be good because mm. personally I won't feel that for Jodie and not because of her more because more of the writing if the writing's better yeah. we may feel that for her I know some people really admire her and I, I respect that like they, 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 they like her as a Doctor and like, like they don't I'm really passionate about it and it's like everyone we'll all have our one Doctor won't we that we didn't yeah. want to go um like in the like in old who um people were, tom baker i think was the main one um for people yeah tom baker's the sort of one that i know the most out of old who yeah yeah and he did was in the fifth of wasn't he tom um tom baker. yeah that's it that's probably yeah. why i know so much yeah. about yeah. him <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that was odd though when he what you were saying about like you need to go um find Gallifrey when he only had one episode mm. left Matt um yeah that um, was weird um and it, it, it the whole Gallifrey thing is really bizarre because it's destroyed and it's back again <laughs> all the yeah, time yeah they just keep yeah it's always just flipping between like it's it's gone it's back it's gone okay it's like can't we just <laughs> fucking leave it now we get it yeah, we yeah. get the point <laughs> yeah. they should have just left it after the 50th I think um, I think they did a good job then of like freezing it in time or whatever they did. Um, I think yeah. they should have just left it then. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's, I know it's the birthplace of the Doctor. Obviously it means a lot, but it's not, I don't find it that much of an interesting plot point either. It's like, yeah. whatever, I don't care. <laughs> it's just say the Doctor's from Scarra. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. Uh, might be more entertaining. Or like um, mm-hmm. Mondas, <laughs> um, something. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what is your thoughts on the like timeless child storyline? Um, do you know what? I find it hard to understand <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, so it's a bit like oh, I don't know. I really don't know what I think about it. I choose to kind of ignore it just because I don't understand it mainly, which is really stupid and ignorant. But yeah, I'm not too sure about the timeless child sort of stuff. Yeah, doesn't really make much sense, does it? Like saying the Doctor no. was there's lots of incarnations, which is silly because there's only been possibly sixteen or fifteen if you include John Hurt and the Joe Martin Doctor. Um, yeah um, and it's like it kind of spoke sort of represented how she, it they they grew up um regenerating and I'm, I'm kind of like what's the point in why did they have to regenerate all throughout their childhood as well and it's different like it doesn't make sense I don't get it because they only re- regenerate if there's something wrong if there's if they get you know, close to dying. So I, I don't know. I don't understand. But yeah, <laughs> if Jodie regenerates, um, because I know there's there's certain things out there saying that she may not. It might just be too could continue to whenever we they announce it. But 
if, 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 there, if there was a regeneration, would you like it to be like outside the TARDIS? Oh, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Because have all of them been inside the TARDIS? Yeah. So since Ninth Doctor, yeah, onwards to yeah, yeah, till now. Yeah, I thought so. I think. Oh no, that's because yeah, no. The reason why I said that is because I think I saw a screenshot on Instagram or something, um, and it was like a, a possible leaked photo of her regenerating outside the TARDIS. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I saw that or if if it was true or not, but I don't, yeah, I don't really care that much. Um, I think it will, it's tradition, yeah, if she regenerates inside TARDIS, it makes sense, um, but it's not a big deal to me if she does it outside. I don't, I don't care really that much. Yeah, um, same. Like, it'd be mm. nice, it'd be nice, I suppose, for a change. Um, that's true yeah something different like i heard i saw something about the water or like she's going to go through some water and it will be too continued or something like that but um it would be nice for something like i think it would be one of the most watched episodes of her era the last one <laughs> I think. yeah definitely her first one was very highly watched as well i think because everyone was very interested to see what was what it was going to be like so yeah her first and her last will be the most watched yeah she, she jumps out of the TARDIS and all of a sudden lands on planet earth <laughs> yeah yeah that's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah I didn't get that I, I was more worried about well where does the TARDIS pop off to <laughs> yeah and in, yeah. in Sheffield as well like <laughs> all places <laughs> yeah you, 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 you like most episodes we're used to in Cardiff and then they go to Sheffield um and Liverpool more recent yeah I don't mind it doesn't make a difference to me but yeah it's just weird like there are other countries <laughs> how, how crazy it is that it's always in the UK somewhere that she, they land <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's very um it's very interesting um yeah yeah like um yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how it all goes and, and everything. Um, mm. Come October, when she regenerates or or leaves somehow. <laughs> um, it's October. Oh yeah, god. Okay, yeah. I didn't know what date it was. Yeah. yeah, there's no specific date yet, but it's autumn, I think, which will be in October. Um, yeah. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm pretty... yeah, it's probably is. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm very interested what will happen because the normally the doctor regenerates on the festive special, um, like at the end of the year. So that would be that would be interesting. Like, would they have filmed that? Um, because I think they might be filming the next series already. Um, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, series yeah. series fourteen, which um, the doctor fourteen doctor probably leave for series sixteen, three seasons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like it, it's weird, isn't it? Because since David Tennant, it's been three seasons each Doctor, hasn't it? Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be nice for a Doctor to go longer than that, um, somehow. Hmm. I don't know if it's like they have a specific contract that has to be three seasons or something, but yeah. <laughs> I suppose like the Daleks, they have to have the Daleks in every season. I think because like, yeah. they got yeah. a contract for the Daleks. If the Daleks, they'd be in trouble. Um, which I do think they're overused. The Daleks. I think they are, they are as well. One hundred percent. Like the three <laughs> specials for Jodie were all Dalek episodes, which they didn't have all to do Dalek that. Episodes. Yeah, they didn't have to mm. do that, did they? They could have had a Dalek in the series and then do one episode with someone else if, or something. Yeah, I mean, I do like the holiday special ones. That is like New Year's special ones with the Daleks, but yeah, I do think they are overused and they could have done something different. Yeah, we need some sort of new monsters, don't we? Uh, I think we yeah. will. We will get that under Russell T Davis. I think again. Um, yeah. Because he was the showrunner when we were young. <laughs> uh, like watching yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he um, was so good. Yeah, yeah and like. 
Oh, one of them, like, other ones I didn't like were the silence, um, like uh, oh, under yeah. Matt Smith. Um, yeah, they. Yeah. And then you didn't like them because they were scary. Sort of yeah. Thing. yeah, 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 yeah. They're really freaky. <laughs> yeah, and, and Weeping Angels uh, as well. Oh, everyone hates Weeping Angels. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, and, and do you remember the Vashta Narada in, on, on David Tennant? Yeah, the dark. Like, oh. I feel like after that, I couldn't go into any shadows and stuff. I was like no. creeping around shadows. <laughs> no, uh, that 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 did creep me out as well. It's it was scary. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really yeah. weird. Yeah, scary. And that was the introduction of River Song as well. I think that's yeah. very clever how they did River Song, how they wrote it backwards. Almost. Yeah, yeah, that was. Like, how the hell did you figure that out? Like, I don't know how they wrote that, but it's very good. Yeah, that is because it is all in order. Like from that episode, that she was talking about uh, what happens at the end and, and stuff to the tenth Doctor, and yeah, and and got that exact sonic screwdriver as well from the last one. Um, yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> And um, I think like fans want her back, but I feel like her story is ended in Doctor Who. I feel. Um, yeah, um, I kind of feel that as well. It would be nice to have a little yeah. scene with her, and maybe, but yeah, maybe not back. Back. Like we need new characters, really, don't we? I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, because like, like we we like Captain Jack was like come back, I suppose, for that episode to kind of help <laughs> in a way for viewers, maybe. And it wasn't, he wasn't even in it for long. I was very disappointed oh. with um, John Barrowman's return it for um, the 13th Doctor because it was, he wasn't in it for long and I felt he didn't do anything, really. I was just there, like, great. <laughs> I think there could have been more interaction with him. I really wanted him to have, like, a cheeky moment with um, Jodie being, like, how she, um you know, the Doctor's a woman now, I wanted him to be a bit more cheeky, but it felt like he was being very politically correct and very safe. I'm like, that wasn't Jack. Jack was so cheeky and would have been so flirty with Jodie and stuff, and yeah. they weren't like that at all. No. But, yeah. Now she asked about Rose. And, like, he brought up Rose, didn't he? Um, to her. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was funny. But then it was kind of brushed over. Yeah. Yeah. It, like... <laughs> It's all nice hearing about, like, I think from the 60th, they should focus on um, from new, for, I don't, not, like, you kind of have to move on, don't you? Because we can't always stick to these old companions and uh, old doctors, like, coming back all the time. Um, mm. Like, we kind of have to move on with the show, I feel. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Yeah, yeah cause... But if you are going to use them, use them better than you did mm. with Jack. Because <laughs> yeah. he was just... Like, I was like, what? I want to see more of him. I want to see his cheekiness and everything. But no, they didn't really show him off as he used to be. Yeah, like, if you want these characters back, like, you could easily have the temp back, do Doctor back, you could have his human Doctor. Or, 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 or yeah. the human version of oh, him. Oh, yeah, that would be so good. I would, I would love to see Ten and Rose on the parallel universe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to do it. Oh, for the sixth, it'd be nice if they did it in separate episodes. They each had their own story or something. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be so yeah. cool. Because I think that would get Crystal Eccleston back, I think, because he yeah. would... I mean, he came out and said he wouldn't want to work with any of the Doctors because he probably wouldn't get on with them. The Ninth Doctor wouldn't get oh, on really? with them. Oh, um, like, really? No, I mean, like, in, in, like, Doctor Who. Not personally. Oh, right. Um, like, like, how the Ninth Doctor is. Um, because he's quite yeah, that's true. Um, argumentative and stuff, isn't he? Um, he's very firm and very cold. Yeah, mm. yeah, and like like with him, um, him and Donna. I would like I would like to see him and Donna because they would just argue all the time. <laughs> yeah, they would do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that would be a good idea. Yeah. Um. So a few things before we uh we finish up, Chloe. Um. I just mm -hmm. want to ask because we do you, you, you a lot of videos on Star Wars. Like, what made you do Star Wars out of everything? So the thing is, um, I was just saying, I actually, as you could tell, I do know a lot about Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. Star Wars, I didn't grow up watching because it's just I'm a I'm family of 
girls mainly it's me and my sister my mum and I have well my dad is kind of around an awkward situation long story anyway um so I think that um the problem is my parents kind of thought Star Wars the girls probably won't like it I don't I don't I think a lot of people their parents put it on for them to watch um however I grew up in an era and it's not my parents fault and it's just the sort of time we were living in they were thinking oh yeah the girls won't like that so we they didn't put it on you know sort of thing which is strange because they we watched up too and stuff but anyway um so I watched it in lockdown actually um I got into it and I just it revamped my love for sci-fi and all things imaginative and stuff like that so um yeah I got into it in lockdown and that's why I started doing my TikToks on it yeah yeah like you like um yeah yeah that's a good idea to get like into it like as well like like through lockdown and then start doing your basing your videos around it and, and everything yeah. yeah it's I mean a lot of people the Star Wars fan base is very toxic and um, a lot of people could be like oh you know I've only been into it for two years fake fan whatever but I feel like it's not my fault <laughs> that I didn't grow up on it you know um and yeah I still love it as much so yeah um <laughs> In a way, Star Wars, how they did the episodes, it is a bit odd because they started off backwards in a way um, mm, with, with, yeah. the, um, with the things, didn't they? Yes, but obviously it came out in the 70s and they didn't really know what it would be at the time, probably. And they didn't realise how big it would become. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's it's a very good start. Like, Recently, I actually started watching all the episodes again because I was bored, yeah. um, and I like with, with certain games and 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 different things. I just wanted to have a recap, um, and I I liked them and like the um, originals uh, were really good. I feel like the last three ones of the series are not as good as the the others, but uh, it's Star Wars, so <laughs> yes, it's all right. Yeah, and I really appreciate that opinion because a lot of people are like sequels don't count f the sequels you know i like the sequels i don't think i'm not saying they don't have their flaws they have their flaws but i like the sequels anyway and that's why where the toxic fans come in and like oh that you're a fake fan if you like the sequels fuck off like yeah. <laughs> um i think oh who is it i watch a youtuber called um memulus his name is and um he said something like fuck off like you know I like if you like the sequels if you don't like the sequels and you hate on other people go have sex go do something interesting with your life like seriously you sad virgins <laughs> just let people like what they want to like and it's not that hard and um yeah I think I mean they have their flaws yeah I think all of the the um films can have their flaws if you really look hard enough and the sequels aren't immune to that they have a lot of flaws but I still like it so you know it's one of those really heated debates in the um Star yeah. Wars fandom which is why I kind of hate the Star Wars fandom but yeah I think a lot of women do as well a lot of women in the Star Wars fandom get a lot of hate um as I said it's kind of seen as a, a boys sort of series and that's why when women get into it it's like oh you're not really into it you're into it for attention and it's like no honey no we are real people you know women are real people too <laughs> we can like sci-fi as well it's we so can. strange but yeah yeah we can and like um he, like, it's, it's 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 like like just being like like i'm about to be inclusive isn't it like yeah. like being like, like doesn't matter if, uh, if, it, if it's mainly a boy show like girls can, can like that as well um and yeah yeah and like but there's no such thing as a boys a show a girl show it's there's nothing shows tv shows films and stuff they're not gender specific you don't right. put a gender on a film or a tv or something like tv series or something <laughs> it's not gender specific so right. it's just crazy how people come to that conclusion anyway but yeah yeah yeah, you don't. You know what? When you scroll on the TV, it doesn't say boys only <laughs> or girls yeah, only. Exactly. No. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But yeah. 
Yeah, it is. And, and like, I, I think the, um, like, probably Star Wars fan will moan at, like, saying, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like, but it, it, maybe they think that, like, the Emperor has been in nearly every sequel or, or every kind of one, really. And yeah, they feel like, every um, yeah. trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and Palpatine has been in every tri- trilogy, and yeah, I mean, I think in the sequels, definitely that's the definite um, flaw the way he was brought back in the sequels. But um, it is what it is. You just gotta go with it sometimes. <laughs> I understand the one where like Anakin's one, the the, the, the Anakin sequels. I, I understand why he was there. The prequels. Yeah, 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 them, them <laughs> ones, but. The last, the, the last three, um, was a bit. I think everyone was a bit surprised when he came back. The last one. Yeah, <laughs> and the fact that they didn't have a real explanation, they just said somehow Palpatine came back, and that was the explanation. And that's like the line everyone uses to kind of make fun of it, which I find is really funny. It's quite funny. Um, but yeah, I, I still like him. I think yeah, that's really a bit silly, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's I it. still appreciate it and kind of look over it. Yeah, yeah. Like we all have our comfort shows. Like, like we watch like um like I can watch Do- Doctor Who all the time. Me. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. Same. Like I've watched the first episode of Crystal Eccleston about a hundred times. <laughs> yes, yes, that one's so good. It's just so. It just brings me back to my childhood, which is why I love Doctor Who. So and my love for Doctor Who and Star Wars are completely different because, yeah, Doctor Who, as I said, is very much a nostalgia thing for me. I grew up watching it. It brings me back to my childhood, where Star Wars is the m- more recent thing in my life. And it's, you know, it's my life right now. It's, it makes me happy right now. So they're two different types of love for me. Um, but, you know, they're still both um, great in my eyes. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, mm. With, um, like, do you have a favourite episode from Doctor Who at all? Oh, oh my gosh. That is so hard. I know, they're all um, good, aren't they? <laughs> well, see, this is hard because I automatically want to say Doomsday with Rose, but that's, the, it's, it's, oh, it's the one that kind of meant the most to me, but it's the one that's most heartbreaking to me or one of the ones that's most heartbreaking to me as well. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll probably say Doomsday because it's just, I just remember it, watching it all the time as a child. So that's probably, yeah. And that, that's probably why I had so many nightmares because that has both side of the Cybermen and the Daleks in. But <laughs> yep. yeah, I'm going to say Doomsday. Yeah, that one's pretty scary. Like, my... Yeah. Like, like I did love Journey's End, um, episodes and oh Dominic. yeah, that that one's so good, yeah, yeah. Like towards mm. Doe Tenant's end, they were very good episodes. Um, like in, in series four, like you had the the Bash of the Narada, and then you had you had got you got Journey's End, and then then you've got his episode, the uh, the like the, the one with the the water ones that I've petrified of them. I was, you know, I want to get the, the waters out their mouth. Yeah, and, those uh, ones are so underrated, I'd say. But yeah, those ones are great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I would say my, my favourite episode is the Go on the Fireplace. Um, I've got to say, that's my favourite one. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that one growing up too. So that's yeah. fair. Yeah, like, <laughs> I've, got, I've got to say that one because like, I love the music in it, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I love, I was just going to say, I love the aesthetic of it. I mean, what time period is it? I'm really bad at time periods. What is it? It was in France, 19, yeah. I believe. Um, 1920. I don't know. <laughs> it seems very, very, it almost seems before. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I love the aesthetic of, um, you know, France and that sort of time period. I love all periods sort of pieces anyway. Um, so, yeah, I really love that. And it was good to see sort of the, the contrast between that time and Rose and Mickey in their modern clothes and stuff. It was really interesting to see. But, yeah. It was, yeah. Oh. It was, um, <laughs> yeah, like there's, there's so many good episodes we can choose from. But, um but yeah, but yeah. Um, 
<laughs> one more thing, uh, like I suppose like a final question before we uh before we finish, Chloe. Like, um, is there like any like as, as well as like the, the links you got for your um like mental health like advice? Is there any other things that that you want to finish up with like around mental health or anything? Around mental health, um, I would just my main sort of thing is I like speak openly just because it's not something that should be embar like embarrassing to talk about. Um, I've recently made friends with someone who's really struggling with his mental health and um, encourage him to go see his doctor um, and he's getting better. So it's not, it's not embarrassing to go speak to your doctor about it. That's what they're there for. And you wouldn't, it's exactly the same, as I said, as falling over and breaking your ankle, breaking your wrist. It's exactly the same. If you are struggling, your brain is um, broken and you need to fix it. Um, definitely try different things. I was put on medication and CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, um, straight away. Um, it took me a couple different rounds of medication. I had to go through a couple different ones because they have all sorts of different effects on my body, but I found the one that's great for me and I've been on it for over a year now. So it will take a couple times. Um, but if you're not a fan of going on medication, try therapy. Therapy is always great. It wasn't great for me because I did it during lockdown and um, it was on, it was at like nine o'clock in the morning. I kind of just put it on my computer. It would be through Zoom. I just kind of put it on my computer and then go back to sleep because I was really tired. So it wasn't a great experience for me. But um, I think now they are doing therapy and group therapy in person. So I would recommend it if you could get on it. But yeah, definitely try different things. Um, but don't be ashamed of it. Just go for it. Thank you. Well, that's some... No problem really good advice and it's, I'm glad that like someone's reached out to you and like you, you're supporting them for um like for, yeah for them yeah, really. um but <laughs> um a last thing before for me for, um before we before we finish uh because um today is, is the first episode for the um mental uh, well uh, autism and doctor who kind of uh summer episodes so and, and some we may relate to mental health so it's, it's it's really good to start off with um Chloe and then um yeah it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really nice because we're just talking about the things we love and um and are passionate about um so thanks again Chloe it's been it's been awesome speaking to you no problem thank you have a really good time thank you <laughs>